Being asked to provide someone with a sample of your poop probably sounds very strange. However, your poop, often referred to as stool, can hold valuable information about what germ may have made you sick and whether you are still likely to spread that germ to other people. Because providing public health professionals with your poop is so important to improve your health and the health of other people around you, we want to help make this process as easy and as safe as possible for you. During this video, we will walk you through what is in your kit, how to collect a stool specimen, and how to send it back. Step one, get ready. Before you begin, let's make sure you have everything you need. Remember, you'll need to use a new kit for each person and for each sample contribution. Your stool sample convenience kit should include a cardboard and tissue paper liner, a paper bowl, gloves, and an alcohol cleaning pad. You should have also been provided with a stool sample collection container that may look like one of these. The collection container should include an outer cardboard tube, an inner metal container, and a small spoon with at least one plastic container holding a liquid or gel to preserve the sample. The plastic container should be wrapped in an absorbent material. Please do not drink or discard the liquid or gel from the small plastic container. It is easiest to write your name, collection date, and time of collection on the outside of each plastic container before you collect the stool sample. However, be sure you are reporting the date and time the sample was collected. If your collection container is different from those featured in this video, please contact your local health department with any questions you may have about how to use the container before beginning. Step two, collect the sample. Peeing on your stool sample can ruin the test, so be sure to pee before you begin. Lay the cardboard and tissue paper liner on a flat surface with the liner print facing up and fold the side flaps up. Peel the backing off the adhesive tape on both sides of the liner and attach to the top of the toilet seat towards the back of the toilet bowl with the liner print facing up. If your stool sample has been watery, place the bowl on top of the tissue paper liner. You can bend the bowl back into shape if it was squashed before use. Poop into the liner or the bowl. Use the small spoon to scoop a cherry tomato sized piece of stool into the small plastic container. If the stool sample is watery, slowly pour the sample directly from the bowl into the plastic collection container, ensuring not to overflow the container. To avoid spills, you may want to carefully bend the edge of the bowl to make a spout before pouring out the sample into the plastic container. For a small child, or if you cannot collect the sample any other way, you may consider collecting from a diaper. If the stool is firm, use plastic wrap to line the diaper. This will keep the stool sample from being absorbed into the diaper. Remember if stool from a diaper has been peed on, the sample cannot be used. As a last resort, you may use the spoon to scrape poop directly from the dirty diaper. You will need at least a cherry tomato sized amount of stool. Step three, pack it up. Now that the sample has been collected, it's important to clean up the area. You're dealing with human waste that may have an infectious disease. Any surfaces that may have been contaminated could make someone else sick. Make sure the lid of the plastic container is tightly sealed. Gently remove the tissue paper liner from the cardboard and flush down the toilet. Throw the rest of the cardboard liner in the trash along with the bowl and small spoon. Wrap the plastic container in the absorbent material and place in the metal container. Remove your gloves and discard in the trash. Use the alcohol swab to clean the outside of the metal container and any other potentially contaminated surfaces in your bathroom. Be sure to wash your hands with soap and warm running water for at least 20 seconds. Put the lid back in the inner metal container and place the metal container inside the outer cardboard tube. Do not write on the outside of the cardboard tube. This section will be completed by your local health department prior to shipping. Refrigerate your sample after collection if your local health department instructed you to do so. Step four, submitting the stool specimen. If you will be transporting the specimen, don't let it get hot. You may need to use a cooler with an ice pack. 
Your local health department should have provided special instructions about what to do with the sample after you pack it up. If you have any questions, you should contact your local health department. Visit this link to find contact information for your local health department. Thank you for your valuable contribution to public health. Your local health department should notify you of your results soon.